Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Turbo Shed. And today we will be putting this 350Z six speed manual gearbox into this LS400. Yeah, we're going to put this six-speed manual in, and it's quite an involved job. Um, so, obviously, that's a Nissan Gearbox 350Z Z33. This is a Lexus, and they don't fit together. They're not meant to anyway. So, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, so, as far as the jobs go, we've got to um, make an adapter plate to go between the engine and the gearbox. We've got to make a flywheel. We've got to source a race clutch for it that we can make the flywheel fit. We've got to modify the prop shafts to put the Nissan prop shaft front onto the Lexus prop shaft rear. And we've got to make the gearbox mountings and we've got to somehow get the gear stick and mechanism through the floor. It's a lot of work. It's interesting. And uh, first job, we've got to go and do some CAD and design work, choose a clutch and uh, do the CAD for the, um, the adapter plate and uh, the flywheel that we're going to make and build it. Let's go take some measurements. Lovely. So the first job is to measure up all the dowel sizes and the bolt holes in this face of the bell housing to get the adapter plates to fit this engine. Right, Leon's used the burner and taken all the measurements for the 350Z gearbox. Um, so now I'm going to use our spare one. So then our adapter plates, blanks, are back from the water crossing and it's lovely. We've got, so the gearbox side here, engine side here, it's pretty much the best they say. And we're going to try on the gearbox and see how it fits. We haven't got any holes in it yet, so it's just going to and see how it works. that this is a good fit as well. So you can see there's these two features here. Uh, we've actually put these in because this is all round. It's very difficult to date them. Uh, and by putting these features in here, they're just going to be used for a tooling setup because we know that the centre of this gearbox, the way we've designed it, if we draw a line or a datum down from this face to this face, the centre is on that line and it's 140 millimetres up from this uh, flat face here, so we know exactly where the centre is, and we can use that as our zero. Right, time to go and uh, program the CNC mill. And we've got a lot of holes to put in from both sides. Um, also, the side that's going in from the gearbox are countersunk, so the engine bolts will sit in this plate, and all the ones for the gearbox are threaded, so we can put the gearbox on afterwards. So you 
see we've done up one of our plates. Now we've got our jig bolted on here and um, I did the first seven holes, which is three on this side, seven on this side, two dowel holes, two bolts here. So we put the dowels in, put the bolts in, we've got the clamps on, and this should hold everything securely. So we can go around the machine the rest of it on higher feed rates and then um, get all the rest of this machine. We're doing it all from the gearbox side because other than two counter sinks, that's the way that all the machining works out from this. Um, so we'll set it off and do the rest of it. take it off, we'll try it on the engine and gearbox, do that countersink, thread the tapped holes that we've got to put in this, and that's our adapter plate done. There we are, you can see our dowels that we put in while we were machining this, make sure everything stayed in place. So we're um, obviously there a decent fit, so we'll tap those out. Looks like an adapter plate for me. Here's our plate bolted to the engine. So we've got the six um, M12 fine bolts here and we've got the four on the bottom. They all line up nicely. You can see it's all countersunk so we get a flat face for the gearbox to mount on. Uh, these are the engine dowels, they line up nicely. Um, so next job is to thread the holes that the gearbox is bolting to, which is those two, that one, that one there, there and down the bottom and then we're ready for a trial fit of it and that'll be this done and obviously tidy up these um, the data marks that we've got here. So that seems to have gone together really nicely. Here's our adapter plate fitted to the gearbox so it fixes on obviously all the holes in this for the gearbox fitting are threaded whereas opposed to the engine ones which are all countersunk. So the idea is the plate goes on the engine first and then the gearbox goes on afterwards. Um, so we've got two bolts down the bottom here and there's one, two, three, four M12s and then I think there's three M10s as well. And it all bolts on from this side nicely as per the standard gearbox. So we can actually use all of the original bolts except for one, uh, which is this one here I've put the cross through uh, because we've um, we put cylinders on that side if you can see that and we can't get a bolt in from this direction uh, because that's on the engine so we're only going to miss one bolt uh, so that should be fine that's it adapter plate is done so we're still waiting for the clutch off AP so in the meantime we bought this very nice Willwood clutch and clutch cylinder so today we're just going to fit it in through the firewall and get it sorted for when the clutch arrives we think the pedal will fit just around here, right where our brake pipes are. Which is a bit of a pain, but oh well. So we'll go have a look inside and see if that's right. Yeah, we think there's just enough room that master cylinder will fit between the firewall and the engine, but it's going to be close. So up inside the car, we've removed the uh, the handbrake pedal, which sits there. And we can see up inside here, you can see the light coming through. I can see the light. That's where our pedal is going to mount roughly. And we've got all the gubbins up here. Um, and hopefully it'll all fit. So it's time to get chopping. So we've measured the distance between the firewall and the back of the engine and it's five inches. The mass cylinder is four and a quarter. So we've just got enough room but it's going to be tight. So here we are down in the engine. We've um, There's a bolt hole, a stud, that's used for mounting the foot handbrake, or foot emergency brake, foot handbrake. Uh, so we've ground that stud off from the outside and pulled it through and we've made a paper template of how things are going to sit and you can see that that's going to sit there quite nicely I think. So now we've got to make the hole for the cylinder, move our hydraulic handbrake pipe slightly uh, and then hopefully all this is going to go in, although it is going to be very tight. 
we've got our pedal in for our trial fit now. We've got our two bolts on. So Leon's going to test it here, our crash test dummy. Yep. So let's see what we've got down here. So I think the only thing we might need to do is we might have to extend the pedal plate slightly um, yeah. so it comes down about an inch, um, it's sitting about an inch higher than the brake pedal. Uh, but there we are, we've got nice travel and to be honest a longer pedal is probably going to be better because we're using a high force clutch. So there we are, let's have a look under here. There you go Leon, do you want to operate it? It all looks good, we've just got to reroute those handbrake cables, the uh, handbrake pipes, so it's uh, out of the way. That's that, and it looks really neat under the bonnet. And here we are under there, we've got a decent bit of clearance to the engine, both sides, and through the firewall. So the last thing to do is that there's a, um, a third mounting bolt, which we're going to bring down from the dash cross member. Um, and that'll be it mounted. Get ourselves a remote cylinder so we can plumb it in and um, I think we'll just I'll make a longer pedal plate for it. And that's the clutch pedal in. That wasn't so painful. So we take that out. Yeah. So here's our clutch cylinder. It's in now. It's all bolted in, all tight. And that fits very nicely there. I think it looks like it was almost meant to be. So that's cool. Right then, so this is our handbrake, parking brake, emergency brake that came off the car and um, these two mounting holes have both been used so we'll show you on the car how we've mounted the car pedal but this isn't going back on again So here we are looking up inside the footwell and you can see there that obviously this is the, uh, the clutch pedal and we've got a bracket mounted off the top there which is one of the old handbrake mountings or, sorry, emergency brake mountings and the at the front um, we've mounted it through there so I hope you can see that it's very difficult to get into with the camera let alone tools to be able to do this but it all seems to have come together very well I think yeah I think it's all come together very well there we are mounted up inside there on the firewall so that's it we've got the remote reservoir on order and the next job is to get the gearbox out Here's the remote reservoir mounted, simple job, just a little bracket up off the vacuum one way valve there. Um, that's done, another job done, another step closer to a manual gearbox. Gearbox coming out Dave, and we've just taken the exhaust out of the car. Hang on, there's the exhaust. And um, we seem to have no silences and no nothing on the car anymore, in terms of um, dampening the sound. My neighbours are going to hate us doing this. So we were going to sort of, um... This was Leon's idea, just to clarify. Oh yeah. <laughs> Ready? I am. I don't think my neighbours are. <laughs> sound like that sounds evil <laughs> that is evil <laughs> that's perfect right what's next job send the console out and, the and prop, shaft. prop shaft off um, and yep. then let's take the rear gearbox mounting off get the gearbox out um, and then wonder what on earth we're doing and why we're so stupid doing this <laughs> why not let's go for it right prop shaft off Back half of the or front half of the prop shaft. That's it, we're almost there. So next job under here, gear linkage that we've got here. There's the back. Um, take these bolts out on the gearbox mount. Uh, disconnect the oil cooler and the transmission oil cooler lines. And I think there's three or four electrical connectors and uh, then we'll take the bolts out the engine and pull this girl out. Here we are underneath so we've got the bolts out the bottom of the bell housing and um, we've got our transmission cradle here on the jack 
and the trolley jack to drop it down into. So all we're going to do now is take out these two bolts that are remaining on the cross member, drop the back of the gearbox down, undo all the connectors and take the top four bolts out of the bell housing at the front and that should mean we can pull the gearbox out. Off you go. Point of no return. The gearbox is held in by air and a couple of dowels now. But to get the four bolts out on the top of the engine, we made this. To the three foot long, half inch drive, breaker bar extension. And we still struggled. Yes, we welded a 24 mil nut on the top end there and we ground a half inch square in the other end. Um, so that when we were getting the bolts out, we could go over the top of the gearbox here. And the engine bolts, the top four of them are all the way over there, two and a half feet in front of us. So the only way we could do it was to make that breaker. And it did the job just fine, even though we still had to get a feet and both hands on the breaker bar to get the nuts undone. They were crazy tight. Stupid. And we couldn't have done it without that tool. Right, let's pull the gearbox out. It should just come straight out now. Hopefully. Gearbox is out. <laughs> right, pull the jack out. And there we have one very large gearbox shaped hole in the bottom of an LS 400. After much o struggle o later. That was hard enough. Well, it? if we had the extension available and we knew to take the torque converter off the, uh, the pressure plate, off the ring gear plate first, that would have been a lot easier. Yeah. But there we are, it's done. We know for next time. Right, let's have a look at the gearbox. Presenting one Leon and one Lexus gearbox. Automatic gearbox, which the internet says you can't drift. Which we just did. And that gearbox has had a massive amount of grief and worked perfectly. So the internet is wrong. What a surprise. Again. What a surprise. So there we are. It's out and I don't really want to put it back in. So um, I think we need to have a good tool tidy up and all that kind of stuff and then start thinking about um, trying the Nissan one in. So here's our adapter plate for the, gear, for the 350Z gearbox and the 1UZ engine and we've done slight modification to it um, in chopping these bits out to clear the exhausts and we've taken off the EGR which is where that was and on the back of the engine where that was and on the exhaust. So now that's cleared. Um, we can fit this on now. Here's the EGR valve. Uh, there's a common problem on LS400 EGR that this cracks here. So, it's broken. It's just going in the bin, because no use to us. Wait, what's bolts in? Yeah, so sort we'll of start the top, should we? the adapter plate is in and the next job is to pray that the gearbox fits in this tunnel. Moment of truth, will the Nissan gearbox fit in the Lexus tunnel on the engine? So we've got the engine on our engine cradle or our, I'm sorry our gearbox on the gearbox cradle here. Get some wood to keep it solid. Yeah and let's offer it up and see if it actually goes in which of course it might not because this is the first time we've ever tried this. Let's give it a go. <laughs>
actually I've turned it towards the back is a bit tight the gearbox because the Nissan gearbox actually turns out to be wider than the Lexus one. So we need to do some small adjustment. I am now going to adjust it using precision, skill and very accurate laser measurements. Precise. Well, it's sort of I've got a big dent in it now, which is good. Man, I don't know what to make this car out of, but it doesn't want to bend. Right, carry on with it. Well, we've at the moment we've given up on AP racing. Um, I ordered a clutch off them on the 28th of April, I think it was. It's now the 20. 23rd July and uh, they contacted us and said it might be another month uh, but we're not sure uh, so uh, they wasted like three months of our time on this so I've given up and ordered a clutch from Extreme Clutch in Australia and hopefully that should be here next week so while we're waiting for the clutch to turn up uh, it's time to sort out the, um, the gear shifter now on the Nissan this is mounted on an aluminium casting that comes off the back of the gearbox and the problem we've got on the Lexus is the engine in the Lexus is mounted quite far back and uh, it means that the gear shifter is too far back in the car. So what we've got to do is uh, we've got to take about three and a half inches out the centre of this casting. So I'm going to cut it off and we're going to move it down and weld it all back on uh, and then the shifter should be in the right place to come through the floor and then I can shorten the control rod that goes between the bottom of the gear stick and the gearbox as well. And hopefully that should all go in. I've already done the test weld on this aluminium casting and it welds up nicely so it looks like it's going to be a bit decent aluminium. So we'll get it cut, dressed up, welded uh, and then at least we're another step closer uh, despite the efforts of AP messing us about. Well, after a serious amount of cutting and grinding, you can see that we've got our two arms here, which were the uh, front part of this assembly, and we've got the gear stick assembly here. There's three and a half inches missing out the middle, so it's all being cleaned up um, on the joints because dirty aluminium is not fun to weld. Uh, now it's all cleaned up, um, it's time to weld it up, and then we'll have to put it in the car and see if it fits. Let's hope so. We're well past the point of no return with this. Right, time to get some welding done. I've welded all the way around the inside and the top of this. It's not the prettiest welding job, but it's certainly stuck. And uh, 
let's leave it to cool down and then we can make the shorten the linkage um, and that should be the gear stick done. So this is our shifter linkage, the standard Nissan one, and we can see that because we've moved this forward um, that we're going to have to shorten this. So we need about 75 millimetres off this shaft. And actually, it's not too bad to do. If I can get that out of there. Because the standard Nissan shaft. The standard Nissan shaft has a yoke on both ends and it's just uh, welded in a couple of places here. So if we just grind those welds off, we can take that yoke off the end and we can move it up the required distance, tack it back on, make sure it fits okay. And that'll be our shifter linkage done, I hope. Here's our setup mocked up. So I've put the linkage rod a lot shorter. It's just um, pushed together at the moment. But you can see I've got the gearbox in neutral. We've got the gear stick pointing straight up and down. So it looks like the right place. Time to weld it up and see what it looks like. Test that, make sure it's okay before we get too far in. Another job done, put the roll pin in, this is all bolted up now and we have six forward and one reverse gear on a nice short throw Nissan gear stick. Seems very nice. Looking forward to getting this in the car. Hello everyone, this has become a bit of an epic, so we're going to stop it here on part one and we will do a part two. So in this one you've seen us buy the 350Z gearbox, design and make the adapter plate. We've put the clutch pedal in, the Willwood clutch pedal, uh, taken the old gearbox out and we've shortened the gear shift. So in the next one you'll be able to see us, we're going to uh, buy the clutch, design the flywheel, manufacture the flywheel and then we're going to have a go at fitting all this back in. We've also got to get the car running because it's an auto box. We took it out. The car won't start now, so we need to fool it into thinking the box is still in. So that's all to come. Please keep watching. Please like. Please subscribe. And we will see you for part two of 350Z into Turbo Shed. Cheers.